the addition theorem of angular velocities basically states that we can add angular velocities across reference frames. And I, I think this is best shown and understood through an example, so we're just going to jump right into an example. So say we have a spinning disk. Um, we have our, our inertial frame here that's fixed to ground. That's our red basis. And then we have our green basis here, which is fixed to the disk. And we're going to say the disk is frame A. Doesn't matter what you call it, right? The ground is frame G, and the disk is frame A. The red basis is fixed in G, and this green basis here is fixed in A, which is fixed to the disk. Uh, and the disk spins an angular velocity of omega. And omega is equal to theta dot. And theta is the angle we make as we spin. So as we spin, the angle gets bigger. So what would you say the angle angular velocity of frame A in frame G is? And this is how we write it, like, like this down here. We say that omega, the angular velocity of A in frame G, is equal to, well, how does our green basis change with respect to our red basis? Right? Well, we can see that it's, it's spinning about that EZ direction by theta dot, right? By the rate of this angle, the rate at which it's changing, right? So it's spinning about this EZ at a rate of omega. So theta dot EZ, or omega EZ. That is the angular velocity of frame A in G. And EZ, our green EZ, is equal to our red EZ, right? Because, oh, erased everything. Because our EZ, our green EZ, and our red EZ always point in the same direction. They both point straight up, just based on how I set up the problem. Okay, easy enough. So now what if we added a second rotating disk, which rotates with respect to the first disk, not to ground? Well, it would look something like this, right? So this is our first disk, just like we had above, right, with frame A. And uh, we still have frame G here that's fixed to ground. And this disk is spinning with respect to ground. But now we added on this second disk on top of the first disk, right? So when this one spins, it's spinning not with respect to ground, but it's spinning with respect to frame A, to that lower disk, right? And if another way you can think about it is, if we zoom in right here, Say you're standing on top of a merry-go-round, right? So this merry-go-round is, is like our first disc, and this is spinning. So if you were standing on top and not moving, you are not moving, then you're spinning at the same rate as the merry-go-round, right? You'll just be spinning around. You would be standing still, but you would be spinning at the rate of the merry-go-round. Now, if you started spinning yourself on top of the merry-go-round, right, you start moving your feet and you're spinning around, then now you're not only moving at the rate of the merry-go-round, you're also getting this extra boost of you spinning around, right? So you're moving at the rate of the merry-go-round plus the rate at which you spin around. The, the linear example of this is uh, like if you're uh, in an airport, and you know how they have those moving conveyor belt sidewalks that uh, you can go on? Well, it's like those, right? So if you're just walking on ground, you're walking at whatever speed you're walking at. But say you now start walking on one of those, those uh, conveyor belt walkways, sidewalk things, then now you're not only walking at the speed of, you know, that you walk at, you're now getting a, a speed boost, <laughs> basically, from the sidewalk. So you're walking at the speed of the sidewalk plus the speed of your normal walk, right? Same idea, but we're spinning. <laughs> okay, I hope that's clear. Um, and so the way I wrote this is uh, it spins at a rate. This upper disc spins at a rate of phi with respect to the lower disc, and it makes this angle rho, right? So phi is equal to rho dot. And if we were to write this out, the angular velocity of frame B in frame G is equal to the angular velocity of A in G 
plus the angular velocity of b in a, right? So we can do this like backstepping, right? We can add the angular velocity of b in a plus the angular velocity of a in g. This equals the angular velocity of b in g. And I have this written out down here, right here. So this is what I what we just said, the angular velocity of b in g, so of our upper disk with respect to ground, is equal to the angular velocity of a in g, of a in g, which is omega ez, plus the angular velocity of b in a, right? And the angular velocity of b in a is phi uh, ez. And I think I have it written down here. Yeah, and I said, think of it as stepping from one frame to the next until we get back to our inertial frame, G. Right, so just one more time. We went from B to A, which was phi EZ. And then we added that to A and G, which was omega EZ. And that gave us the angular velocity of B and G. And that's what we have written out here, right? Uh, omega EZ plus phi UZ is equal to omega plus phi EZ. And I changed it to the red EZ. And once again, just to be clear, EZ, green EZ points straight up, UZ points straight up, red EZ points straight up for all time. They're all just, those are always parallel. It's not always the case. It's not always going to be like that. It's just how I set up the problem. So just be aware of that. So what do we typically use this you know, addition theorem of angular velocities for? Well, we use this for calculating the rate of change of a unit vector, right? So recall what we derived in the previous video. We said the rate of change of our unit vector is equal to the absolute angular velocity omega crossed with the vector itself. And the absolute angular velocity is the velocity with respect to the inertial frame. That's our absolute angular velocity, right? So the absolute angular velocity of frame A is just omega uh, easy, but the absolute angular velocity of frame B is, you know, the back step thing we did. Phi plus omega easy. And uh, so this property of adding angular velocities, it does not apply to angular accelerations. This is very important, and a lot of people get this wrong. So say we had, um, you know, a whole bunch of frames, right? A frame A, B, C, D, F, G, blah, 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 all the way up to N. Well, we can do that backstepping thing we just said, where we go from N to M, and then we will go to M to L, and then add that, dot, 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 C to B plus B to A, and that would give us omega N to A. We're allowed to do that, right? That's what the addition theorem of angular velocities does. We cannot do that. We cannot do that with angular accelerations. Maybe I'll make a video in the future saying why we can't do this, but I'm not going to do it right now. Just, you, you cannot do that. It's not allowed. It's not correct, <laughs> okay? But you're good for angular velocities, and that's what we'll use it most of the time for. Uh, so I have an a animation I want to show you that I made uh, in this program called Open Medellica, so let's hop over to that. So this is Open Medellica. It's a pretty cool program used for modeling multi-domain systems. Um, it's free and open source, so you know, go check it out. I'll leave a link for it. Uh, in the description. So let's see what we have here. So I, I just modeled the example we did that we just talked through. Uh, so the first disk, you can see it has the green bases attached, and this is rotating at a rate of 90 degrees per second. So it takes four seconds to do a complete revolution with respect to ground. And then on top of the green disk, I have that yellow disk, and that also spins at a rate of 90 degrees per second, but with respect to the green disk, right? So if you just look at the yellow disk with respect to the green disk, it only makes one revolution. But if you look at the yellow disk with respect to the red basis ground, it makes two revolutions. And if we go through our addition theorem of angular velocities, uh, theorem that we just talked through, you know, that should make sense because um, if we backstep from yellow to green and then green to red, well, what do we get? What's the angular velocity of yellow with respect to green? 
90 degrees per second. What's the angular velocity of green with respect to red? 90 degrees per second. So if we add those together, we get 180 degrees per second. And so that means that in four seconds, it will do two revolutions. See how that works? Um, not too much else. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I had anything else to, to say about this. That's, that's pretty much it. Hope this animation made it a little clearer and, you know, maybe I'll use Open Modelica in the future with some more, more examples. It's good for visualization and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.